Let me introduce you to Randy Simmons. He's worked for computer-aided technology for over 15 years. He's probably been to SolidWorks World that many times. I'm not sure if he's ever missed one. It's a real treat to have him on the line today. He brings a wealth of experience to what we can expect to see, not only what we saw in 2019, but maybe some things that we might see in the future from his perspective. So with that, I'll turn it over to Randy. Take it away, Randy. All right. Thank you, Chris. So yeah, uh, 2003 was my first SolidWorks World, and I, yes, I have been to everyone since then, so very, very lucky to do that. All right, here's the agenda of what we're going to talk about today in this webinar. We're going to take a look at the top 10 enhancement requests, the voting results for that. We will look at a preview, like Chris said, of some stuff that's hopefully coming new in SolidWorks 2020. They always show that at SolidWorks World. Um, we'll, we'll talk about some of the announcements and introductions of new technology that were announced this year at SOLIDWORKS World. And then we'll explain how to, you guys can access some of this data uh, yourself to review on your own. We'll talk about some of our achievements and highlights at SOLIDWORKS World as well. Um, CATI, we had over 200 of our customers at SOLIDWORKS World this year. So very, very awesome to have that many of our customers there. Hopefully uh, some of you were, were represented there from your company. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the results of the top 10 enhancement requests voting. Every year, SOLIDWORKS receives over 6,000 enhancement requests directly from you guys, the users. Uh, starting in November, they hold an open voting on the SOLIDWORKS forum for everybody to vote on their favorites uh, that they would like to see implemented in the software. And since 2001, when they started doing this, 70 percent of these top 10 enhancements have been implemented in some version of the software. It may take them two or three or four years to get to one, but, but uh, of the requests since 2001, 70% of them have been implemented in one way or another. There was one of the top 10 from 2001 uh, that finally got implemented in 2015. So sometimes it may take a while, but uh, that, that list never goes away. They never abandon any of those. These are always on the list for development. So for this year, there was over 10,000 votes submitted, um, and they added something new uh, last year in 2018 and continued it this year. When you started to vote, first you had to answer a general question first, and this had a slider bar that you could adjust on where you wanted SOLIDWORKS development to focus their resources more heavily on. The choices were performance, reliability, and functionality, and you could choose then how to weight each one. So here's how that broke down for this year. People uh, voted on 45% focus on reliability, 31% on performance, and 24% on new functionality. It's only one or two percentage points different uh, than it was last year in, in, in those categories. So this is the list. As always, you know, some of these seem strange. Uh, some of them were kind of unclear. These are the direct words and, and, and phrases that whoever made the request uh, spelled it out in. Um, not sure what they totally mean on number 10 there, automatic direction change on extruded cut. I don't know if they're talking about uh, maybe being able to turn cuts into extrudes or if it just isn't picking the right direction for them sometimes. So I don't know. Uh, that one was voted on as number 10. Number 7 um, is actually coming in SOLIDWORKS 2020, hopefully. We'll see that in the next section that we're going to look at. Number 2, uh, this is always being worked on to optimize things to multi-core but it's a huge undertaking to change all the code and so many things in SOLIDWORKS just have to happen in linear order one after another uh, to where it's really hard to take advantage of multi-core for a lot of stuff. I'm really shocked on the results of number for number one. Um, I haven't really had that much problem with this and never really hear students, customers complain about this. I'm surprised that this is really that big of a deal that it got voted number one but apparently that's important and, to, and aggravating some people. Uh, I particularly like number eight and number five are great ones that I think uh, definitely deserve to be on here. Um, during that same meeting when they announced these top ten enhancement requests, uh, one of the heads of development also always gives a short presentation. And uh, at this session this year, they provided an update on insight into a few things. They let us know about the multi-year initiatives that they have. These are the major multi-year initiatives. Some of these things they started working on in 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, Sketch Inc., Mesh Modeling, 
the structural systems, that was actually new in 2019, and then they'll continue on with that. And then graphics performance, a lot of that was worked on in 18 and 19, and they're going to continue on. So those are the big uh, initiatives that development has. Um, there is a couple of things that I wanted to point out. They spent a lot of time talking about this uh, Microsoft white glaze change in SOLIDWORKS 2019 that you may uh, see whenever you upgrade to 2019. So Microsoft does the white glaze, right, where they, they kind of white out your screen um, after four seconds of a program non-responding or not responding. Um, in 2019, SOLIDWORKS actually disabled the Microsoft white glaze and now has their own white glaze with a message that pops up and lets you know that SOLIDWORKS is still working. Rather than just seeing the swirly uh, blue circle and the white glaze, you at least now know that SOLIDWORKS is working on something. Um, you do have an option to wait or kill SOLIDWORKS. And if you do kill it, um, the call stack info will be sent directly to SOLIDWORKS on what happened or why, uh, what it was waiting on when you decided to kill it. So they'll know, you know, uh, what people get aggravated at waiting at and things they should try to make faster. So something to look for when you get into 2019. That'll be a little different. And then they also wanted to make sure everybody knew about um, the a, a big. There was a big plea from them to for everybody to join the customer experience improvement program. Um, you can enable this after SOLIDWORKS is installed by going into System Options, General Options, and turning on that checkbox shown on the right screen there. Or you can enable this during the install with the Yes, I Want to Join, the Customer Experience Improvement Program. Um, it, some people opt out of this and don't want to do this because they think it's sending private information to SOLIDWORKS. It is not sending any private information. Um, it's only sending your log files. Uh, we, SOLIDWORKS is still recording all of this anyway, so if you're worried about the performance and this is going to slow you down inside of SOLIDWORKS, it's doing all of this anyway. The only difference by you joining or not joining is allowing it to send the data to SOLIDWORKS. Uh, absolutely no personal info is being sent. And also they announced that a new enhancement request site is under, develop, uh, under development. Um, this will be you know, directly related to top 10 enhancement number nine was to improve the, uh, the process for submitting enhancements and voting on them. So that is already being worked on. Um, you may have already noticed if you've been into, in the knowledge base in the last few weeks, it is using the 3D Experience platform already. So this new uh, enhancement request site will be using the 3D Experience platform, allow you to do many, many more things that you haven't been able to do in the past. Um, and discuss enhancements and track enhancements and maintain your votes. So that's coming sometime later this year. So that will be in place definitely by November for the uh, top 10 enhancement request voting uh, for next year. All right, so our next section here we're going to take a look at on uh, one of the days at SOLIDWORKS World, they always preview what's hopefully coming in the next version of the software. And I always like to say hopefully because any of this could change. I mean, you know, they're showing us the big wow things, so hopefully those are the ones they're going to keep. But it has been known in the past for something to be pulled if it's not working, you know, up to the standards of SOLIDWORKS. So these are those things that they did show us. Um, so G3 or C3 continuity for splines, we've always been, to do, been able to do C2 continuity for splines, but uh, C3 is a constant rate of curvature constraint, so even finer control over how surfaces flow into each other. A new type of section view, normal to the screen, um, and this updates as you rotate the model. Not affected by zooming, so you can zoom in and out and see what's inside there. Um, it basically, you set the section view uh, normal to the screen, and then as you rotate around, it will update. You do, can control the depth of the section with the mouse wheel and the control key. So pretty neat uh, for getting into a model and not having to worry about picking a plane. Just orient your model the way you want it. Also, uh, a new option to propagate envelope components into subassemblies, hopefully coming in 2020. Uh, mass properties in SOLIDWORKS routing, so wires, cables, and coverings uh, can include a mass per unit length property, so then you'll get accurate mass properties in your uh, wire harnesses and see how much all of that adds to your overall assembly. Um, the 3D Experience Platform Connector for SOLIDWORKS, which uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that has been hinted at uh, even last year. It finally will come uh, in 2020. It allows seamless interoperability between SOLIDWORKS and the 3D Experience Platform apps. Some of those we've talked about in the past. Some of those were new announcements uh, this year that we'll get to. 
This one's really neat, uh, flexible parts, and hopefully the videos here are playing just fine, but multiple instances of the same part without configurations or equations or even having to have separate files like you would have had to in the past. So the spring example there, that's the same spring in there three times, that's the same hinge in there four times, that's the same bellows in there um, four times also at the top and bottom of each of those. And the ability for one of them to be compressed, one of them to be expanded and so on, open closed, uh, without having to make configurations or equations or anything of those. There's going to be a new detailing mode for drawings. So in 2019, uh, they greatly enhanced the large design review mode in assemblies um, to be able to actually do work while you're in large design review mode and not just reviews. So this will be like a large design review mode for drawings, but also allow you to do work. Um, so your largest multi-sheet drawings will open in seconds. You'll be able to do annotations, balloonings, view creations, dimensioning. Big deal for on dimensioning, right? Tolerances and so on. Um, just hit save when finished. Uh, save it as a PDF and DWGs if you need to. And then if you do fully need to open that drawing, um, you, you can, of course, from there. So super fast drawing mode, detailing mode, they're calling it. Um, in 2019, functionality, functionality was added to do markups in parts and assemblies. And in 2020, they're going to extend that into drawings. So with a Windows Touch-enabled device, you'll be able to mark up and write on top of drawings. And then people were so excited about this in 2019, but people who didn't maybe necessarily have touch screens. Um, so in 2020, we'll be, you will be able to do markups with the mouse, so without having a touch screen device or a pen, so with a mouse. Also, uh, markups in parts and assemblies and drawings in e-drawings. Um, I say now available, that's incorrect. That's hopefully now available in 2020. So markups inside of there. All right, so those are the uh, what's hopefully new enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2020 that was shown to us at SOLIDWORKS World. And I actually did a blog on both of those topics, the what's new in 2020 with a little more detail and the detail on the top 10 enhancements uh, if you go to this link. And Chris Snyder will post that over in the chat so you don't have to hurriedly write this down. Uh, but that is the link for our blog. You could, of course, just go to CATI blog and search for either of those titles and be able to find it as well. But we'll provide that link over in the chat. All right, the next section we're going to take a look at is the product announcements that were made at SOLIDWORKS World this year. And one of these tools, is, or one of these announcements, was a uh, thing called 3D Experience Dot Works. So, this was presented on day, day one. Um, this first one is not so much a product, but more of a suite of tools under this new 3D Experience.Works brand name. Um, there are many apps that run on the 3D Experience platform, um, and this is really just a promise to have certain ones of those apps uh, be tightly integrated with the SOLIDWORKS software. So, Anovia for PLM, Simulia for high-end simulation, and Delmia for manufacturing were the ones included so far. This is also going to encompass the X products, um, X design and X shape and so on, that uh, you may have heard about already and we will talk about in another slide here. So one of those products that's in the 3dexperience.works area is Delmia Works. And this one is a new one that was also announced this year. And uh, this is, uh, was a company already, a product already, called IQMS Manufacturing Software, or ERP Software, uh, for manufacturing, bringing the whole manufacturing and scheduling of manufacturing into uh, the, the fold. And this is going to be part of that tool. So digitally connect your order processing, your scheduling, your production and shipping processes in real time to your ERP system. Another product that's going to fall under that uh, umbrella of 3D Experience.Works is the X Shape tool. The X Design tool was announced last year and will be available very, very soon for everyone. It is in beta right now. This is the X Shape tool. So this is a full three-divisional, uh, three sub, 3D subdivisional modeling. Um, you may have heard of the SOLIDWORKS Freeform or SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer products that we've had in the past. The, this tool will replace those, and X-Shape is what it, the new one will be called. This is a full cloud app, no local install. That's what these X products will be is, is the full cloud app. 
The cool thing about that is you can run them from any device. It doesn't matter whether you're running a Windows PC or an Apple computer or uh, an old computer from five, ten years ago. As long as you have a good internet connection, uh, you'll be able to run these softwares. Um, so imagine, you know, also continuing this on into the high-end Simulia simulation packages, right, from any, any uh, computer. So that's the hope for a lot of these. So for the X-Shape uh, limited beta in March, uh, so this, this month, uh, we're gonna, they're going to start that, and then public beta in the summer, and then commercial release of this will be uh, in November, probably along with the 2020 release of SolidWorks. Another one that was also announced along with this was XStudio, another full cloud app with no local install. And this is for photorealistic rendering um, from any device. So you don't have to have a, an amazing, great, fast computer to do renderings with this tool. Just drag and drop rendering. Um, this tool, XStudio, will supposedly get all the capabilities that SOLIDWORKS Visualize currently has and even surpass it. And this will have a private beta in the April or May time frame. This one was so new that they didn't even have any good screenshots for us on this one uh, that I could share. So this one's really just a pure announcement. Another announcement that they uh, gave us is they announced that, that SOLIDWORKS is acquiring the rest of Trace Electworks software and automation. Uh, this will give our electrical, SOLIDWORKS electrical tool a, a real boost. Um, they're acquiring the employees of that company also, which will help uh, get more balance to the support side. So we were always using this technology in the, in the background. Now they have actually purchased that company. So all the technical breakout sessions uh, from SolidWorks World have always been available in the past. Um, they did a really good job the last few years of providing videos to things in the general session and highlights from all over SolidWorks World including interviews with customers, employees of SOLIDWORKS, and so on. So here's the link uh, where you guys can access the presentations from SOLIDWORKS World. And Chris will put that up in the chat as well. Now, many of those presentations were actually done by us, uh, people from CATI. We actually gave 18 technical presentations, and we had over 1,200 attendees this year at our personal presentations. Overall, there was probably 400 presentations done, uh, 300 maybe. Uh, but CATI gave 18 of those, and here's a link to the specific CATI presentations. We have ours uploaded already on our website. There eventually will be a full uh, uh, website for all of the presentations to be accessed um, at, at that link above, uh, or at the link that I gave on the previous slide, the uh, SolidWorks.com, SolidWorks World 2019 On Demand link. This is just how you can get to our presentations right now. Some of the achievements that CATI got uh, this year at SOLIDWORKS World is top five worldwide in total licenses. Uh, this was the second year in a row that we achieved that. North America's highest install base revenue growth, so that's selling back to our existing customers. We did achieve the President's Club, which is a top tier reseller partner recognition. And then also 90-90 subscription rate, so better than 90% subscription renewal and 90% subscription attach rate for new seats. Uh, so some great awards that we came away with this year at SOLIDWORKS World. Also, uh, a couple of our uh, technical people won some of the digital media awards this year. We won two digital media awards. Um, Brandon Nelms won an award with his putter prototype approved in record time thanks to SOLIDWORKS Visualize and Desktop Metal. That is available on our YouTube channel, CATI YouTube channel. And then Robert Warren also won a Digital Media Award with Backyard Hot Tubs and SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation, and that is available on our YouTube channel as well. One of our customers, a CATI customer in Wisconsin, is uh, Ring Brothers. They were actually featured on the main stage at the general session last year. And this year, they did a breakout session on SOLIDWORKS. One of our customers, a CATI customer in Wisconsin, is uh, Ring Brothers. They were actually featured on the main stage at the general session last year. And this year, they did a breakout session on SOLIDWORKS CAM. So that will be uh, one you'll definitely want to check out if you're interested in SOLIDWORKS CAM or how they're using SOLIDWORKS CAM. Um, was a much more detailed where they got in a uh, breakout session of, of how they actually use the tool. And then the 
uh, SolidWorks World for next year uh, actually is not even going to be called SolidWorks World. It's going to be the 3D Experience World 2020. It will include SolidWorks World and many more of these 3D experience tools that we've talked about. And John Paolo of SolidWorks kind of gave us an insight as to you know why they wanted to make this change uh, with this quote he gave here about 3D being a universal media. And they want for everybody to be able to understand these experiences that can be delivered by this media. So they want to expand to much more than just CAD users um, with these 3D experience products. So that will be in Nashville next February 9th through the 12th. We'll include all of the things you're used to at SolidWorks World plus a lot, lot more. And then finally, we'd like to remind you of the upcoming CATI webinars that are going to be held this month in March. And you can sign up for those at the link provided below, and I, I'm pretty sure Chris is going to post that one as well. All right, so that was our quick overview of what we learned, the major things we learned at SolidWorks World 2019, uh, the technical things that, that uh, most of you are going to care about, we hope. Um, I will open it up for questions if anybody has any. Yeah, right now we don't have any questions, but uh, okay. while everyone is maybe thinking of something that they've uh, been meaning to ask and just um, haven't gotten around to typing those in, uh, again, want to welcome you guys to join uh, the session next week, Design Faster, Not Harder, Screen-Centered Modeling. So um, a lot of times uh, you'll find the tools that you need right at the tip of your cursor in SOLIDWORKS. It's one of the things that I personally like in uh, one of our application engineers out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Dennis Barnes, will uh, present that next week and explain a, a lot of those things that uh, maybe you weren't aware of or uh, maybe add to the toolbox that you're already using. So really uh, encourage you to take advantage of that and um, click on that website. That so it uh, looks like we did get a question here from uh, Ethan. What's the best way to learn more about the 3D Experience platform? It's been hard to find some good, concise, compelling information as to what, why to consider this platform in the future. Randy, you want to take that one? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, it is, it, it, we're, we're getting information um, as slowly as you guys are, almost. Um, so, you know, the, the, real, the real thing to, to think about is that the, the 3D Experience platform is really just a collection of apps. And, uh, you know, SOLIDWORKS wants to be able to connect to those other apps and use those other apps. You'll be using, you know, desktop SOLIDWORKS and then, oh, hey, I need to go do this freeform shape. So you can jump out to the X shape app and do it and come back and bring that model into SOLIDWORKS. And I need to do some really high-end rendering, but I don't have a good computer, so I want to jump out to the X, X Studio app. And I want to jump over to the Simulia app, and now I need to send this to manufacturing. So you'll be using SOLIDWORKS at the center of all that, but it's really just going to be a collection of apps. Um, there is, of course, a 3D experience uh, website that you can go to, but uh, it's just going to really tell you the information of what currently exists on that platform with all of the products. Um, there, there will be a 3dexperience.works uh, web page uh, very, very soon. And, you know, as we get more information, we're definitely going to try as, as hard as we can to communicate that to our customers uh, through our sales network and through webinars like this. So it's coming. I understand that it's, it's confusing. Um, it's, it, it was confusing to us and still is a little bit. But, yeah, we're going to try to pass on that information as we can. Super. I've got another question here. When can we start seeing the impact of GPU acceleration of SOLIDWORKS? Has that been implemented in 2019? Yes, definitely, definitely. At our rollouts, our, our demonstration events that we did for 2019, we showed a, a lot of this. Uh, that is one of the uh, major multi-year initiatives that development is working on, so it will even happen more in 2020. But yeah, um, in the past, before this, it, it, you know, there was video cards that, you know, were $100 and video cards that were $5,000. And, and you saw a little bit of difference, but but it was diminishing returns. It wasn't that big of a deal uh, to get a better video card. It didn't provide that much difference. But SolidWorks has really worked hard with uh, NVIDIA and the, and the other um, video card manufacturers to really start using the GPU. And uh, graphics performance is what it's working on now, um, being able to just, you know rotate and spin and zoom large, large graphical models without it going chunky on you. Um, inside of SOLIDWORKS and also in e-drawings is using this too. And yeah, that's one of their major multi-year initiatives is to continue on that into 2020 and beyond as well. 
So much, much bigger difference in getting a better video card now starting in 2019. Yeah, absolutely. That is one of the things on the top of my list as well. Um, because you do a lot of pan, zoom, and rotate. So uh, if that happens yep. without yep. delay, that's going to add up uh, throughout the day. So um, any other questions, feel free to type those in. Otherwise, I think uh, we're going to wrap things up. But uh, I want to thank you all for uh, attending today. We know your time is valuable. Hopefully you walked away with uh, some, some, nuggets that you, some nuggets that you can give us a call if you have more questions about or investigate further on uh, SOLIDWORKS website or YouTube channel. Also. Be sure to check out the uh, links that we sent you with regards to resources to our uh, SOLIDWORKS World presentations as well as our blog. Uh, we we uh, try to keep that very active and presenting something there every day, so uh, subscribe to that. Uh, also take a look at our YouTube channel. So uh, appreciate your time today. If there are no other questions, it uh, doesn't look like there are. Uh, we're going to wrap this up, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.